guys, I'm going to do something a little bit different today. I'm going to talk about my Rodan trolling motor and actually what powers it as far as the lithium batteries and battery box uh, that I created um, from scratch. So I'll put up a few things here, um, some statistics on it, uh, how I built it, um, and the layout, and then uh, we can go from there. Um, see in the background here, uh, uh, the version one was an old igloo cooler that actually um, was left over for, as a bake cooler and I had some lead acid batteries and just wired them together and I was able to run my Rodan on that. Uh, but the thing was freaking heavy. So we had to do something with that. So up on the screen, I actually put up a little list of things that I was worried about and or just was concerned uh, and looking at moving forward with a battery box like this. So I was worried about weight, um, how heavy it was, uh, space, how much room it's gonna take up. Um, how is I gonna charge it? Um, I don't have access sometimes to a charger. Um, so is it gonna be solar? Was I gonna have it to plug in? Or just could I get multiple uses out of it before I could charge it again? Then the, uh, the last thing was, how often was I gonna just use the trolling motor? Um, wasn't sure, you know, I'd never had a trolling motor before. I wasn't a bass fisherman. I, you know, I pr primarily saltwater fished. So I didn't know how often that would be a, be a thing when I was wreck fishing or using it in certain situations. So you can see here that uh, that black box is replaced by Igloo Cooler. And uh, this isn't even my boat. Um, this is a buddy's boat. Uh, we were trying out. Um, a Rodan so we can go and put his order in and um, you know having the 72 inch I was able to not work in every sea state you can see it's pretty calm here but um, get a good idea of what he would need uh, if he wanted to go ahead and order one but the big thing here is to see that that black pelican case now um, that is the new version 2 of my battery box it might be obvious, but, uh, you know, one advantage of having a setup like this is if you have multiple boats with a trolling motor um, and a battery box like this, you could just need the, uh, the foundations for the trolling motor and you're ready to go. So we tested this multiple times and he has a 31 foot center console and the 36 volt held just fine on full moon tides and uh, even when winds would pick up. We'll switch over to the specs now. I'll give you guys a second to read through those, but then I'll go through the uh, the box itself and uh, show each of those to you. All right, so first up is the Pelican case. Um, I bought a Pelican for, uh, well, it was really the only thing that was just big enough to fit everything, but not too big where it's going to be something that will uh, you know, take up a lot of deck space um, and be a hindrance for carrying or, or rolling around or whatnot. Um, the amount that you have into these batteries, I felt like you need to take care of them. And this was something that fit the bill. Do you need a Pelican? Absolutely not. Um, but for me, this was something that uh, I felt was a necessity at this point. I looked at multiple options um, along the way as far as uh, some of the Milwaukee pack out stuff, uh, DeWalt, um, looking at other coolers like, you know, again, Yeti and Arctic, uh, things like that. But I could not find something that was, again, small enough to fit the batteries and the charger, but big enough um, that I felt it was comfortable to have enough space and things weren't cramped. I could work on it, whatever. So now that we've got the case open, you can see the three 12 volt batteries in series um, in the center. On the left there, you have the NOCO Gen 3 charger, which will give you 10 amps per battery to charge. And again, that's charging on 12 volts um, each. So it needs to be wired to each battery. Um, and since it's pre-wired, all I have to do is plug it into the wall, which is, uh, which is great. Um, I could just take it off the boat, bring it home, 
plug it in and uh, have it charge. Um, so the Battleborn batteries are 50 amp hours each. And for my boat, I can get almost four full fishing days out of it. I have, I have yet to kill them. Um, and with the lithium, there's no decrease in performance as you start burning through the, uh, um, the actual uh, life of the battery there, the capacity. Um, as you can see here, I have my inline breaker, which I basically use as a on off switch. Um, but it's also again, giving me circuit protection. Um, the Rodan is only 50 amps, which was another reason I kind of went with that. Um, it kind of keeps the, the draw down and having a larger 36 volt was something that I felt was, uh, sufficient. So here we have the battery tender male section or female. I'm not really actually sure which one this is, uh, because of the way the screw in design of the battery tender trolling motor plug, it's pretty slick. Um, I thought that was a good addition to, uh, to this box here. So one thing I didn't count on was because the lithium draw is different from the, uh, actual battery, like a lead acid battery that the Rodan would give you battery life based on the voltage drop on the old lead acids. But the lithium stays pretty high up until they would just will not put out anymore. So I was getting false readings as far as my battery life. Um, so what I decided to do was, is, you know, contact the Battleborn. They gave me a, uh, a voltage drop or basically a battery life versus like percentage of life left. So I just picked up a cheap, uh, multimeter that I keep in the box and, you know, again, hasn't been an issue, but just to give a idea of how much I use during the day and do I need to charge it, bring it off the boat or, you know, can I keep going or fishing or I want to go try a new spot with heavier current or whatever it might be. Just showing off the handles here with the Pelican. They're pretty beefy, but that's it. Um, thanks for watching.